So at first, I showed you how to sacrifice at least two pawns in every opening that you play. And then I also showed you how to sacrifice your knight in every opening that you play. And in my last video, I showed you how to sack your bishop in almost every opening that you play. And here we are once again. Look, you don't always need your rook in almost every opening that you play. I am going to show you six different traps in six different openings where you can actually suck your rook right away in the opening stage or somewhere in the middle game in order to win fast the wisest would realize that what i'm teaching you are positional sacrifices let's go trap number one in the ps defense or in the perk defense so you begin with e4 and black plays d6 d4 now i'm a fan of leeches so let me open the leeches database just to be showing you the top played moves you can see for yourselves knight to f6 is what everybody plays attacking the pawn on e4 you play knight c3 you defend that pawn and again they are going to play g6 because what else and now right away with all your eyeballs you go pawn to h4 see you haven't developed any other minor piece from the king side you just rushed out with this pawn move h4 and again you can see bishop g7 is what everybody plays and this is when you go bishop c4 by the way you can play bishop c4 first and then play pawn to h4 move order doesn't always matter castle short is what everybody does and guess what you guys you have your bishop already out and your queen's knight already out what else pawn to h5 immediately the idea is just to mess up black spawn structure on the king side you mess up a spawn structure and go home see again the top played move in the leeches database is knight takes h5 you guys at best you just opened up the edge file for your king's rook which is good for your eyeballs and your toes now look at this you guys rook takes h5 is a good move in this position which even stockfish supports this is good for your soul as it opens up many lines for your other minor pieces to join their attack so from here onwards all you will be thinking of is attacking and attacking for example some of your opponents will think this pawn was hanging but this only helps you to develop your knight with tempo attacking that bishop and after bishop back to g7 now you have a clear winning strategy you want to mate on h7 if they play h6 you take on f7 the best blank can do is to take with his rook if they play king h7 this can even lead to a checkmate if h takes g5 well you have queen h5 check and the game will end in the most embarrassing way let's look at something else if black doesn't take on d4 and they play the top played move again pawn to e6 you just continue playing attacking moves knight to f3 if your opponent plays the top played move queen f6 wait a second the move you want to play very quickly in this position is pawn to e5 okay pawn to e5 but you can't play this immediately because black can play queen f5 challenging your queen which is on h5 so that's why you first of all want to play queen h2 preparing for pawn to e5 so that queen h5 by black doesn't come with a threat this time and this is the best place for your queen by the way so let's say knight c6 like what everybody does and now you can simply go pawn to e5 and there is even this move you guys where black takes the pawn which is a blunder because now you have bishop d3 the plan is to mate on h7 simple if h6 look at this move you guys bishop g5 and black's queen is dead all right before i move on to the next trap let me show you another dirty trap also arising from the perk defense where black plays knight to f6 and then you go knight c3 g6 then instead of playing pawn to h4 right away you play this normally with bishop g5 this is called the baron variation there's a dirty trap that we play if black carelessly continues with bishop g7 you guys where we play pawn to e5 and knight d5 later on in order to mate black very fast if you want to know more about the baron variation of the pet defense you can watch this video that has popped up in the card above you're going to thank me later and so nowadays people are not playing bishop g7 because of the ban variation trap they first of all go pawn to c6 kind of the check defense but hey don't worry just go queen d2 so let's say they play normally bishop g7 you go bishop h6 the idea is if bishop takes you now take with your queen and prevent black from castling short so that's why you won't see most black players taking your bishop they just go ahead and castle short 
But hey, this is when you can again go pawn to h4. And you can see the top played move here is b5. Just continue with h5. And once again, if knight takes h5, this is a little trap that every strong player learns in their early stages of learning how to play chess. You know what I mean? Queen g5 check and black cannot stop this upcoming checkmate with his elbow or a tan bow. Anyways, let's move on. Trap number two. In the Indian defense, the London system setup. So this is where you start with d4. Knight to f6 is the top played move in the master's database. So you go bishop a4, kind of the accelerated London system. But this is still the Indian defense, by the way. You can see with your own eyeballs, the top played move is pawn to g6. What do you do? Knight c3, preparing for pawn to e4 next. So you're going to see your prepared opponents playing pawn to d5, stopping pawn to e4. That's a principled move. And now you go pawn to e3. And surely black is going to play bishop g7. You can see that. And ladies and gentlemen, this is when you can surprise your opponent once again by going pawn to h4 immediately. Pawn to h4 makes a lot of sense when black plays this fianchero setup on the king side and when you know that they are going to castle short anyways, which they do most of the times. Because now you can go h5 once again. If knight takes h5, which is the top played move, you already know what to do, you guys. You should never be afraid of sacrificing your rook. After gh, now your queen is well activated. You are ready to play bishop d3 and all sorts of other attacking moves. For example, if black plays e6, the top played move, you go bishop d3. Wanting to mate on h7, which is not going to happen because of f5, but you just wanted to open up your king side and prepare to castle long. For example, if queen e8, never exchange your attacking queen or your more powerful queen with your opponent's less active queen. Okay, so you simply go queen h2, targeting the undefended c6 pawn. And here black can even make a blunder. If they play c6, the knight on b8 falls. They won't do that anyways. You will see them playing knight c6. And this is where you go knight b5. For example, queen g6, just take that pawn. And after rook b8, you castle long. Next, you want to plant your queen's rook on h1. And let's say a6. They want to trap your knight, but you can simply play knight takes d5. Yeah, temporarily sacrificing your knight because on the next move, you are going to win the rook. If knight takes b8, yeah, material is equal, but... Stockfish gives a plus 3.0 advantage. Let's say queen takes g2. You just retreat your queen and on the next move, you are ready to play rook g1. You have a clear winning strategy in this position. Anyways, now one may ask, after you go pawn to h4, wanting to go h5 next, what if black doesn't castle short? I mean, what if they meet your h4 pawn with h5? Well, the simplest you can do is bishop e2. You develop your queen and castle long. Let's move on. Trap number three in the Vienna hybrid. Spielman attack. This is where you begin with e4. The black plays e5. You go bishop c4. And now black plays the top played move knight to f6. What do you do? Well, you go knight c3 immediately. And you can see bishop c5 is again the top played move. And now you go pawn to d3, pawn to d6. And now you simply play the unexpected move, pawn to f4. Yeah, like literally allowing black to occupy the g4 square with his knight, which is what they do since they have bishop f2 check or knight f2 on the next move. I suggest that you immediately play pawn to f5. What's the idea? Well, the idea is that you are allowing black to double attack your queen and rook with the move knight to f2. And this is when you completely sacrifice your rook on h1 with queen h5. If black foolishly takes your rook, now you go queen takes f7. That's checkmate. Of course, nobody is going to hang that. They are going to cast a shot. But this is when you can shock your opponents, you guys, with this sequence of moves. You start with bishop g5, attacking the queen. They're going to play queen e8. And now you go knight d5. You have plans to psych your knight on f6 if need be. Again, if black carelessly takes your rook on h1, well, you can simply go knight f6 check. That's a knight sacrifice I was talking about. Because after gf, you can simply take that pawn and there's nothing black can do to stop this mate. I mean... Bishop g5, queen takes g5, that's checkmate. So if you want to know more about this so-called Vienna hybrid Spielman attack, you can watch this video that has popped up in the card above, or you can also find it in the comment section down below where I covered this opening in more detail. Let's move on. 
Trap number four in the Scandinavian defense, you guys. Now, wait a second. This is another trap that you really, really, really need to know by heart as a serious chess player. The trap I'm about to show you guys is called the Peruvian chess trap. So this was first demonstrated in the game between Esteban Cano versus an unknown player in the year 1934. So Esteban started with e4, then his opponent played d5, the Scandinavian defense, then Esteban just went on to play the main line with knight c3 after trading his e-pawn, and again queen a5 is the top played move in the master's database, and then Esteban continued with d4, just normal stuff you guys, nothing to memorize here, there are no new things here, bishop g4 is always played by Scandinavian players before they play pawn to e6, out of the pawn chain, anyways, bishop Bishop to f4 by white and pawn to e6, then pawn to h3. A typical line in the Scandinavian once again you guys. Bishop h5 is a theoretical mistake because white can simply start expanding on the king side wanting to trap the light squared bishop and even putting more pressure on the light squared bishop itself. And here white has all sorts of tactics like knight c4 attacking the queen, if queen b4, well black may even lose his queen here after bishop d6, a temporal sacrifice that will end up winning black's queen on b4. So because of tactics like this, it is not advisable for black to play bishop h5, retreating his bishop. The best they can do is to take on f3. And that's when you take back which is what happened in the actual game. And then black played knight d7. Then this is where the Peruvian trap was born. After black played bishop b4, which is the top played move in the Leeches database, you guys. We know that Scandinavian players like castling long. So that's why we go pawn to a3, attacking that bishop. And if they castle long, because they know you can't take their bishop, your rook on a1 is hanging. But that's exactly what we want you guys to sacrifice our rook and after queen takes a1 we sacrifice another rook on h1 letting black to take that as well because now ladies and gentlemen the game is over queen takes c6 check the king cannot escape from sobibo b takes c6 is the only move and then bishop a6 checkmate now you don't have to memorize all these moves you just need to be aware of this trap and this position know that it can occur maybe it will be applicable in some other middle game positions that you will have let's move on now i can't end this video without showing you what to do with black pieces as well i mean how you can sacrifice your rook when you're having black pieces so here we go trap number five in the two knights defense freeze variation this is why white starts with e4 then you go e5 knight to f3 then you go knight c6 then they play the top played move bishop c4 you go knight f6 the two knights defense and again you can see knight g5 is the top played move they're getting the weak f7 pawn well you just go pawn to d5 and after e takes d5 you don't go knight a5 or knight takes d5 you go knight d4 immediately if you want to know the best continuation after pawn to c3 i recommend that you watch this video that has popped up in the card above a very interesting video that you'll never forget in your life. But over 400,000 people play the move pawn to d6. You can see for yourselves renewing the threat to take on f7 with either the bishop or the knight. But you can just go queen takes d6. Allowing white to double attack your queen and rook. And obviously you save your queen. Sacrificing your rook on h8 once again. Because you have queen takes g2. And if rook f1. Yes, in all honesty, bishop g4 is the top engine move in this position which will end up winning the queen but here you can just be simple you guys just go queen e4 check because if queen e2 you are going to win that queen easily if bishop e2 that will be checkmate game over trap number six in the border pest so this is where white starts with d4 then you go knight to f6 c4 then e5 right away d takes e5 and instead of going knight to g4 which is the budapest defense you guys i want you to transpose this into the so-called fayarowik variation the whole purpose of this knight e4 you guys is just to invite queen d5 on the next move but they don't do this before developing other pieces for example the top played move is knight to f3 followed by a3 and knight c3 Let's say knight to f3 is the top played move. Now what I like doing here is to take my time. So take your time, 
before playing your next move to allow white to spot your possible blunder queen d5 okay so take your time before playing pawn to b6 to allow white to see queen d5 because queen d5 folks your knight and your undefended rook on a8 that's what you want because now you go bishop before check black needs to block the check first and this is when you defend both your rook and your knight with bishop b7 oh that bishop is not defended Yep, now you go knight c6, locking up white's queen on b7. And black may think they can escape from Sobibo, but you simply have knight c5. And it turns out that the white queen is almost trapped. The only remaining move is b5, queen b5. And now you simply go pawn to a6 and the queen is dead. Alright, so that's it for today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If at all you did, be sure to hit the like button and remember to subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already so that we can grow this community together. And again, remember to check out my courses at www.casperchase.com that are very affordable at the moment. Join me on Patreon where I post more detailed studies unlike what I post on YouTube. Anyways, thank you for watching my video once again. Until next time, bye bye.